CNC routers look very confusing because you have a ball screw attached to a servo motor, which is attached to a rail, which is attached to another ball screw, which is attached to a gantry, which has a spindle over here that runs off a G code, that runs off a feed rate, that has RPMs, all these different variables, all these different parts. So today I want to hone it all in, bring it all in, and talk to you about each part and what the, all these terms mean. So today we're going to talk about some common parts and terminology that any CNC beginner needs to know. Um, we're going to look at my small CNC first, which is a two foot by three foot, and we're actually going to go over to my five foot by ten foot CNC and kind of examine its parts and how some of the parts work on it and stuff like that and some terminology. And just to give a brief overview of some of the terminology we're going to go over, I'll say that now. So we're going to go over what exactly is a CNC, the spindle, ball screw, rack and pinion, linear ATC, rotary ATC, Y gantry, G code, collet, collet nut, deflection, jog and chip load, feed rate, step over, um, and inches per tooth. So if you want to know about any of that stuff, just stay tuned. So the number one vocabulary term we want to get across is what exactly is a CNC, why is it called a CNC, all that good stuff, which most of you already know, so I'll go through it quickly. Uh, CNC stands for Computer Numerically Controlled, and what it's controlled by is called G-code. And what G-code is, is geographical or geometric coordinates. That's what it stands for, geometric coordinates. So G-code. And really how a CNC works, it works off a giant graph. Like if you're in math class or whatever, you had the graph, and you had the Y and the X axis and the Z. So the X axis, the Y axis, and then the Z axis. CNC works the exact same way. Now, G code used to be very complicated and you had to type it in manually. Luckily now we have programs like, um, well, any of the programs that you use on your computer to program a CNC um, that actually write that G code for us and transfer it to the CNC so we don't have to type it in manually. Way back in the day when CNCs first came out, they actually used ticker tape to actually code CNC machines, which is pretty crazy and I'm glad I do not have to do that now. So once again, I'll go over the go over that one more time. CNC stands for computer numerically controlled. It runs off a of G code. G code is graphical or GM, pretty much graphical coordinates, right? Graph coordinates that tell um, the CNC what to do. So go up, go up, Y, go up the Y axis one inch, go over on the X axis one inch, right? Um, that kind of stuff. But it tells it thousands and thousands of types of coordinates and that that CNC will actually move to those lines and cut. So that's the very first basic part. The next part is you have your spindle or your router depending on what you have. Um, in this case I have a spindle on here but a lot of you, um, a lot of hobbyist CNC's have routers which um, at this level it probably doesn't matter that much. On bigger CNC's you're gonna have these giant spindles like I'll show you in a little bit on my, uh, my 5 foot by 10 foot. That, that spindle is actually 80 pounds. I think this one's probably only 10, 15 pounds, maybe. I mean, probably 10 pounds at the very most. My big CNC is an 80 pound, 15 horsepower spindle on it. Crazy, really heavy, all kind of cool stuff. Um, the next thing is kind of how this machine moves. Um, so CNC's typically move on two different things. Hobby CNC's are gonna most likely move on ball screws and rails. So these are rails and I'll, 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 I'll go close up. So these are rails and these are ball screws. Um, and then you have a motor on the ball screw, either a stepper motor or a servo motor, or a servo motor that's going to turn the ball screw or be on the ball screw itself. Um, that's going to turn the ball screw and actually move along the X or Y axis. And that's another, that brings up another point. You have the Y axis right here and you have the x-axis and then you have the z-axis. So once again like I was talking about on um, the graph and whatnot, so this is y, this is x, and this is z on my CNC. Um, and then it moves on these rails right here and ball screws. Okay, And a spindle is what's running the CNC. The next thing that you have is going to be your y gantry. This is your Y, this is a gantry, um, which is called the Y gantry, but it's called your gantry. The gantry is what really takes the load of your CNC. So whenever this thing is spinning and cutting stuff, this right here is gonna take all the vibration, a lot of the vibration, a lot of the load off um, on your CNC. So this has to be pretty stable. This is, this is typically on rails and supports and stuff like that. And then um, it actually houses your X axis 
ball screw and that and your z-axis as well as your spindle. So the Y gantry or the gantry is very important on a CNC. So in all that excitement, I, when I was talking about the CNC, I did forget to say the other part that makes the CNC move. So you have your ball screw and you also have your rack and pinion. So if you ever hear a rack and pinion, just know it's like, it's kind of like two gears. So you have um, a gear right here that's just kind of like a, it's, it's in a circle and it's gonna move and you have a rail. So it's just gonna move across this rail kind of like my fingers are moving and, and transfer the CNC. It's typically on the Y axis, okay? Now, whenever the CNC is on, I kind of want to talk to you. I have a straw for representation, but I kind of want to talk to you about, um, you know, what, what some of the terms are called when the CNC is on and moving and stuff like that. So whenever a CNC moves to any location, it's called jog. So you're jogging it, even if you're doing it where, by remote control or if it's going to a home position or something like that, it's jogging. Um, so if you ever hear that terminology, just know that's what it means. Um, and feed rate now, you're also going to hear feed rate come up a lot. And what feed rate is, is the amount, how fast this is moving in the material or whatever you're cutting, right? Or engraving or whatever. How fast the CNC is moving along the, all the axis or all the, the X and the Y axis in your material. So it could be in inches per minute, inches per second, centimeters per uh, minute, centimeters per second. It just millimeters per second, millimeters per minute. It, all that stuff can vary. But just know feed rate is how fast that this is going to move in the X or Y direction um, in your material. A plunge is what's called, a, so you have feed rate for X and Y. Plunging is when the Z, um, when the Z axis actually plunges into your stuff and that has a separate feed rate. So let's say you're running this at 60 inches per minute with a 25 inch per minute plunge rate. So this is the X and the Y axis are gonna move faster and then when it goes into your material, um, it's actually gonna go down a little bit slower, um, but that's called a plunge rate. Now, whenever your bit is in there, uh, we're gonna kinda talk about what deflection is. Deflection is kind of another term I kinda wanna go over. And I have this straw to represent. So deflection is whenever your bit vibrates or bends a little bit um, or your material is going to kind of vibrate. To me though the deflection is when the bit bends. So it happens typically in longer bits um, or if you're very, using only the very end of the bit and not what it's supposed to be using. Um, and not really, you know, let's like say this is a one inch bit. If you're only using the very tip and not the first quarter inch of it, well then you may get some deflection and some chatter. So deflection happens when the, um, you know, when, de when deflection happens it chatters your material, um, it probably is gonna dull your bit a little bit, and it's gonna leave these weird marks. So what deflection is, is when your bit is engaged and it starts bending, kinda like this is, and it bends and snaps like that, okay? And it keeps bending and snapping and bending and snapping and bending and snapping. So your bits can actually do this, just a minimal, not as much as a straw can, but a minimal amount, and that's what deflection is. The next thing I wanna kinda talk to you about is chip load, or inches per tooth, IPT or chip load. They both mean the exact same thing. So I always read a lot and always said IPT and I knew, I didn't know what that was, but um, all it means is chip load. So inches per tooth mean chip load. And what chip load is, is the amount each of those blades on the bit take off. So think about your hand in a, um, in a thing of sand, right? Or in a thing of clay. Your hand's gonna grab that clay and take so much and grab it again and take so much and grab it again and take so much. And that's kind of what chip load is to a bit. So um, you want to get the right ratio, which I'll talk about in a later video. But you know, just for this video's sake, it's the amount that blade is going in the amount of clay or wood or material that bit is grabbing and pulling away and cutting. Um, so that's what chip load is. Another thing is step over. So what is step over? Um, step over is the amount that a bit We'll move over if we're doing like a pocketing pass or some type of a pass. So you'll look at step over percentages and sometimes it's 40%, sometimes it's 10%, uh, 50%, 100%, 90%, any kind of percentage. Um, but what it is, is let's say this is the bit right here. If you want to do a 50% step over, it's going to move over half of that bit to the right or left, depending on where it's moving, right? So, you know, it may be 40%. My advice, never do a 50% step over 
because the bit needs to be able to go one way or another. So if you do 40%, it has an escape route, and 60%, it has an escape route. 50% is not recommended. But that's what step over is. So the amount the bit actually moves over, typically in a pocketing toolpath, um, whenever you're pocketing out something. So let's say you run a 100% step over, the bit is actually going to move over the full width of the bit. If you have a half inch bit and you run a 50% step over, it's going to move over a quarter inch each time it completes a pass. So the bigger the step over, the faster you're probably going to get done, but it just kind of depends on what you're milling. Sometimes you want a smaller step over, sometimes you want a bigger step over. And that's what step over means. Um, now I kind of want to talk to you about um, automatic tool changers and kind of what they are. They're called ATCs. So if you ever see a CNC with ATC written after it, um, all that means is automatic tool changer. I have that on my bigger CNC, um, my five foot by 10 foot one. I'll go over there and show you it here pretty quick. And what automatic tool changer is, the bit, the CNC, the spindle will actually drop whatever bits in there and change it out for a different one. So automatic tool changer, ATC. Sometimes they're linear. So there'll be like a row, which I have, there'll be a row behind the CNC of all these bits. And that, CNC's, that CNC is going to come over there and just pick a bit up and, or drop a bit off and pick another bit up. It's really cool. Uh, these giant commercial ones have a rotary ATC typically, which it has this big spinning drum thing on the side of the spindle. So whenever it needs to change a bit, the spindle will pick up. This giant spinny thing will spin really fast to drop off a bit, and it's going to spin and rotate to the next bit. It's really cool looking. They're really, really expensive. Um, but they do save on uh, some things if you're a commercial CNC machinist. But I want to take you over here to my bigger CNC to kind of show you um, the parts on it. And then we're going to go to the uh, automatic tool changer and kind of show you how that works. And I just want to show you my big CNC because I think it's really cool. And I wish I would have saw a CNC like this whenever I was first starting out. So let's go. So we're at my bigger five foot by 10 foot CNC now. And I kind of want to show you the similarities on all the terminology and all the uh, parts and whatnot that goes into a CNC. So my big one, everything's a lot bigger, obviously, but you still have your wide gantry, which are rails. You come to your spindle or router, depending on what you have. This spindle actually on my bigger CNC is 80 pounds. So it's super heavy, um, but once again, same concept. You have your ball screw. I have a ball screw on my Z axis with rails. You come over here. I have a ball screw right here, or it could be a rack and pinion like we talked about, depending on what CNC you have. Um, you have your servo motors, your stepper motors, all encased right here. That's moving the CNC. And I have a little video for you that I kind of want to show you how the, um, this CNC moving on the ball screw and how these motors right here actually move it back and forth. But before we go to that, I just want to you know, clarify that this, this machine is much bigger, but once again, the parts, terminology, vocabulary um, are relatively the same, even though it's a much bigger CNC. So let's go to the video. So this is my linear automatic tool changer or ATC. I do not have a rotary on my bigger machine, but usually typically these are all full of collets and collet nuts and bits and all that stuff. And they kind of just snap in there. I don't have all of mine full of my machine for uh, reasons, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it for you and I want you to see how this thing actually will come and actually change out my bit and pick up a different bit. Um, and these are really common on a on a professional grade CNC. They're starting to make them now on smaller CNCs, which is good, but I'm just gonna show you an example on my big CNC, how a Lanier automatic tool changer or Lanier ATC works. And it's, you know, you may not be at that level, but it's still good to know the terminology. So what my CNC is gonna do um, in the next video is kind of, it's gonna come back here, take off the dust hood that is on the CNC, drop the first bit that it has. So it's gonna drop the bit into the thing and then go move over and pick up another bit and then come out. Um, it's actually pretty cool to watch. Uh, you may hear a little bit of hissing. There's some airflow and stuff in there, 
But uh, that, that's what I wanted to show you next, how an automatic tool changer actually works. Hey guys, so I hope this video taught you some CNC basics that you didn't know prior to watching the video, some terminology, and showed you some cool stuff um, that an automatic tool changer can do. I think that's really cool to kind of see what these bigger commercial machines can do. Um, don't forget to subscribe and comment below and let me know your thoughts uh, for future videos. And um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Tune in next time.